he made it seem like it was real and it was genuine and i know how confusing it can be i was that girl that was like this had to be real we were together for five years that you are lost you don't have anyone to talk to you don't know where to go i wish i would have had a video like this to help me through my breakup as well as a breakup with a narcissist like i just did not know what to do he literally told me that it was nothing more than his f doll but not only that like he written me a letter in this book in particularly really really saved me and really really helped me understand the mindset of a narcissist to the major fact that will make you understand why narcissists are the way that they are this is what i use and what i did to help myself and heal myself So hi goddesses, as you can see in the title of this video, this video is going to be about breakups and specifically on how I dated a narcissist for five years. I am also going to be sharing major red flags that I ignored during our relationship. Also I will be sharing three tips that I studied after the breakup with my narcissist because it is really important to educate yourself as well as heal yourself by educating yourself after being with a narcissist. My name is Poe Goddess, and if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're curious about my channel and what it's about, it's about healing and growth, pole dancing, self-development, manifestation, and a little bit of anime, because I am an anime fan. Before we get into the video, I just want to give a fair warning that this may be a long video because there is a lot that I'm going to be sharing because my relationship ended a year ago and I'm still currently going through the process but I just want to give a forewarning this is going to be a very informational and educational video these are just things that I learned in the process on how to heal myself after being in a relationship with somebody that is a narcissist now let's get right into the video so I'm going to start off with sharing my red flags and these are things that I thought was weird and even when I talked to my personal close friends they thought that it was weird but I kind of just went along with it so the number one thing that is very telling on a narcissist and if they're a narcissist this is the number one red flag it is love bombing love bombing is something that every narcissist does now what is love bombing love bombing is someone that will tell you that they love you within the first few weeks of dating them as well as them asking you to meet their family in a very short period of time that is a major red flag so i'm going to share a little bit of um my story with my narcissist so i met him back in college and when we met you know we were talking on facebook for a little bit and then funny enough we went to the same college but i was like stranger danger i didn't go out of my way to meet this guy but he did dm me to do like a photo shoot did the photo shoot we became friends and then pretty much after that so when we did the shoot it was like in february and then in april he decided to ask me to be his girlfriend now i want to make something clear i wasn't like yeah let me be your girlfriend and whatever the case is i was really like standoffish because like he was about to graduate um but he had said something that you know did change my life but this isn't trying to be like positive about this person but he had said that let's enjoy the time that we have together that's what he said let's enjoy the time that we have together and that kind of changed my perspective on life because it was very true now we did date but i was again kind of standoffish but i made it clear to him that we would date for only like four months because he was about to graduate um in a couple of months like in four months and i was like i'm not gonna be in a long-term relationship with somebody like never say never and be careful what you say because the universe has jokes sometimes with that being said we did actually break up once he did move to california and we were broken up for a little bit and something had happened where I did proceed to ask him like, hey, like what, what's happening? Where is this going? Or whatever the case is. Um, he then was like, you tell me. And I was like, okay, let's still be together. I was not expecting to be with him for five years, but you know, that's why I say, be careful what you say. You never know, da da da. Also, I forgot to mention as well, when he did ask me to like meet his family within like the first month of 
kind of a, a, a stating he also took me on a trip to trip to new orleans i didn't pay a thing he paid for everything he was very like giving gifts you know what i'm saying and paying for things and paying for trips and all that and more and that's why i'm saying that love bombing is so so crucial when it comes to a narcissist because this is what they do they try and like lower you in with all of these gifts and so on and so forth now i know like someone can be like why did you meet his parents because i did meet his family his mom and his brothers and sisters and stuff within like the first month i will let me hold on let me explain myself okay the reason that i did that was because because I was like, listen, I already knew for me, I was like, I'm not gonna be with this dude. I'm not gonna be with this dude. Like, if they fall in love with me, which they will, I knew that. So I was like, okay, if they fall in love with me, I'm gonna be the best thing, da da da, whatever. And I know I am still. Um, <laughs> I don't care. But anyway, I'm the best thing ever. So they're gonna fall in love with me. That's why I did it. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, like, weird of how fast everything was happening. And I thought it was weird during this time but I was kind of like let's go along and just see how this plays out kind of thing and the biggest thing that I want to sit here and say he told me within a very short period of time pretty much four weeks of us dating that he loves me I want to sit here and make this clear I never said I love you back I didn't say it until we were like eight months into our relationship because I wasn't like that and I, I'm not joking when I say that. It took me like eight months into the relationship and he was saying I love you. I think it's funny because one time he did actually kind of force me to say I love you to him. This is like when he was about to like leave and we broke up and whatever. He's just like, he was like, just, just say it to me. Just, just say that you love me. Just, just see how that feels. And I was literally like, I love you. Like that, with that face. And he was happy. He was like, oh, and then gave me a kiss. But I was said it in that way because i'm like i'm not gonna pretend to say i love you as if i love you so yeah but anyway that's love bombing watch out for that those are all the red flags that i learned from that experience that i ignored um because i was like i was young you know what i'm saying i was like 20. So. so my number two red flag is gaslighting now what is gaslighting someone telling you in your face that that never happened and you're wrong when it indeed just happened so i have a funny story that actually funny enough when it was happening like the first couple of times i did think it was funny it was literally the beginning of him gaslighting me but he did it in such a way that i thought was funny but again it turned into something I hated so much. So the story is that uh, this was like back in college. So in college, the school that I went to, we had apartments. So he was over at my place and I was sitting at the table. He was standing up for some reason and we were like talking. As we're talking, he had his hand in his like pocket and he went to go pull out his hand out of his pocket and a Q-tip fell on the floor. Now, mind you, I wanna make this clear. Like we both watched the Q-tip fall to the floor and when it fell to the floor me just being me i was like is that yours like being funny about it like is that yours and he looks me dead in my soul okay in my soul and tells me no when it when we watched it fall to the floor we both watched it happen and then he just started lying he just started fucking lying, saying like that was there already. I was like, literally, I was like, no, I just watched you. It just, it just fell out of your pocket. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. It was probably there the whole time. I think it's your Q-tip. So that was the first time of him like gaslighting me, but it was in the moment hilarious. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, there's no f way. Like, you know what I'm saying? We literally watched it. But this was the last time where we are way into the relationship this is actually when we're not together necessarily we're just kind of like getting around with each other excuse my language but this was like the last time where i've really had enough of his bs prime example of what he would do and this may be something that you experience as well where i would say let's go to the store and get tacos and make tacos tonight there would always be like a long kind of like pause and for me i would be like is he does he hear what I'm saying? Like, I feel like he's ignoring me, but I know he's not ignoring me. I know he's like listening to me, right? So there would always be a pause. And then he would go and he would look at me and be like, you know what we should do? We should go to the store 
and buy tacos and make tacos tonight. The first time it was kind of funny and I was like, I just said that. And he's like, no, you didn't. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I just said that, like, what are you talking about? Like, he's like, no, you didn't say that. And it got old really quickly. And the last time I just snapped and I was like, I literally just said that. Like you're, you're taking the words out of my mouth that I just said to you and you're acting as if I didn't just say it. He was like, you did? I don't know why I don't remember you saying that. Literally, this is what this guy would do. So that is like full on gaslighting and I'm not gonna sit here and lie. Point blank period, the person that said it best is fucking Billy from Billy and Mandy. And it don't mean funny, ha ha. No, no, no. Funny weird. It was not funny, ha ha. Funny weird. This is the last but not least. Now, I'm going to admit that my narcissist was not abusive at all, but I did have a friend that I was really close to, one of my best friends that was dealing with a narcissist that was abusive. But this is my number three tip, and what that is, is manipulation and control. You literally cannot have a narcissist without control or manipulation. Now, I, again, like I disclosed in the beginning, my relationship with my narcissist, every narcissist relationship is going to be different. I will say that my narcissist was pretty chill and he was pretty cool, but I genuinely believe that is because I was like a homebody. I didn't really have friends out here. So he wasn't like on my ass about certain things or anything because I was very much just always at home. and. I wasn't really a people person. I'm still kind of not, but I'm getting better at that. I'm becoming more of a people person. I'm getting better at that. But I truly believe because I was a person that didn't do too much and stuff like that, he, he was pretty calm. But with that being said, that does not change anything. That does not change the fact of what he did and the things that he was trying to instill in me. Because again, he was a control freak and he was very manipulative. So one of the things that I do realize like within this year of healing myself that he was trying to instill fear in me and I'm going to express what I mean by that. So when we moved in together, we lived in a studio apartment, a very small studio apartment. You know what I'm saying? There was like really no room to be separated in the apartment at all. So the only time that we had separation is when we were both at work. So when we were living together for, I want to say a good year and a half, I was ready to like look for an, at least a one bedroom apartment for us to have a little bit more space. space. And I noticed that every place that we would go to, he would be like, no. And he was not at all for moving out at all into a bigger space. I don't even know what he was saying at the time, but he just like made it clear like that's not what he was trying to do. But I realized why he never wanted to move into a bigger space. The first Christmas that I had with him, um, where I brought him home to my family for the first time, this is where he met my dad, um, which if you don't know, and I'm gonna share this, like my dad passed away about four years ago and I, me and my dad were very close and I, my dad was always open with me. I was never scared to talk about boys with him or nothing. So he was like my first boyfriend that I bought home to my dad. So that was something that was very, special and important to me and I shared with with my dad anyway going back into the story we were in the kitchen you know what I'm saying it was just me and him and we were kissing in the kitchen and I opened my eyes and I saw that he was like looking at me you know what I'm saying staring at me as like we're kissing I pulled back I was like are your eyes always open and he was like yeah why I was like that's weird and he's like no it's not so i noticed that pretty much every single time after that we would kiss and he would always have his eyes open now i did ask like my mom and a couple like friends and stuff they were like i some of them were just like nah it's not weird it's, it's kind of weird but it's like it's normal or whatever the case is i can't even remember I, it was weird to me that's where it all started and that's where it all like kind of began of him instilling this fear of me feeling like he's always watching me in the best way to put it so like i realized throughout the relationship specifically when we were living together that pretty much any time that i would like go to look at him you know what i'm saying and go to talk to him or just turn around he was always 
looking at me already and of course at one point i had asked him like why like are you staring at me you know what i'm saying he's like because you're pretty so of course like little on me like was like oh whatever you know about it but it was like without a doubt like i would say pretty much 90 percent of the time he was always looking at me and not only that there were times that i would like go to my car or just like kind of be out somewhere and he would pop up out of nowhere it was weird how that didn't happen a lot of the times but it was still like moments like again i would just be like leaving to go to my car and he would come around the corner and he would be like you you were going too long and i'm just like oh, okay like calm your nipples relax i don't think it was going that long but he would just always watching me so that is something that he was definitely instilling in me that like at every given moment that he was watching me and it made sense to why he never wanted to move out because in our small studio apartment he could see me at every given moment and not only that he was super controlling and i mean it was like bad and let me explain this one story that this was like literally i had enough and this was like at a point where i actually stopped talking to him for like three months i cut him off because i had enough if you've been with someone that is controlling i don't know if you've ever been with someone like that is so controlling to the point where they're sitting in the passenger seat trying to drive or tell you how to drive right i feel like we have all experienced that especially with a narcissist someone that tries to tell you on how to drive this dude went so far as to not sit in his passenger seat to actually grab the wheel of my car while I was driving because he didn't like the way that it was parking or driving or whatever the case is. Like, I don't know about y'all, but that doesn't that doesn't work. Like me, my my feet on the pedal and you steering the wheel. Like, and, and it wasn't like, oh, he asked, he literally went to go grab for my steering wheel as I would drive I was driving or I was parking or whatever the case is, and I flipped out on him so that was like one of the biggest things that took me to my breaking point and that's where i stopped talking to him for like three months so that was him being super controlling but the manipulation part of him um i realized that maybe you are someone that has experienced this but he manipulate me into being hypersexual. he literally told me that it was nothing more than his f doll but not only that like he written me a letter he didn't say those words exactly but i will be showing and sharing a clip of the letter that he written me so yeah pretty much in the clip he just made it clear that it was nothing more than a sex doll to him and he created me that way literally so that was definitely one of the ways of him manipulating me into being the version of whoever he wanted me to be which was his personal plaything. now the thing that is the worst part about it he made it seem like it was real and it was genuine and i want to sit here and make something clear and i know how confusing it can be i was that girl that was like this had to be real we were together for five years i know that he loved me i know that he cared for me but at the end of the day if this person did really love me and he did care for me one he would have never written a letter like that and two he would be here in my life and three i wouldn't want to not ever talk to him again and four the fact that i had to go to therapy in order to heal myself from this person says everything and more that was not love so this is my message to you goddesses please understand that that person it's not love and it never will be so now that we're towards the end of this video i'm going to be sharing one fact that i learned from this book called the narcissist in your life and if you're interested in reading this book i have all the books that i read in the journey of me healing when it comes to dating a narcissist in this book in particularly really really saved me and really really helped me understand the mindset of a narcissist and i really want to sit here and thank one of my friends that actually let me borrow this book because she had been in a situation with a narcissist and she was like this book she actually recommended it to me and let me borrow it and she told me this book had helped her so much i also want to just sit here and make clear on how important it is to educate yourself during the process of leaving a narcissist and so on and so forth because i know there's a lot of emotions and there's a lot of confusion so let's get into the major fact that will make you understand why narcissists are the way that they are understand that a lot of narcissists do not come from great 
backgrounds or family like their parents specifically did not raise them or give them the right proper love that they deserved a lot of narcissists come from humble beginnings or in my situation with my narcissist he came from the hood how he was raised his mother did not raise him properly and did not love him properly so he had to literally survive on his own since from my understanding from when he told me it was like four or five years old this man literally had to raise himself when he was five years old even when it came to his brothers and sisters like his siblings and stuff they were just there were so many stories that he told me and i was like there's something wrong with this this isn't normal and and then me being a person a black girl that grew up in the suburbs like i did not understand anything from that dynamic literally like my mom and my dad like i don't think my mom or my dad really grew up in the hood they didn't grow up in the hood at all but they just knew that they didn't want me or my brother and sister to come from that background so where i lived where i grew up was a very safe neighborhood and literally you can hear a pin drop that's why it's so funny i'm a city girl now living in los angeles um but at the end of the day like i did not grow up in that background so i never could understand his perspective like he told me a lot Ave, of things that a child should never experience i also will be creating a second video on why the nurse the narcissist chose you because in the book as well like i said definitely check it out in the link in description this book breaks down on why the narcissist chose you or why narcissistic people choose you what is it about you what are your characteristics now when i read this part of the book i'm not gonna lie it really hurt my feelings but at the same time it was just like you know what i'm happy to know that this is what it is like why you know what i'm saying it, it was like okay it hurt i'm not gonna lie but it's like okay i know now so before i close out this video i really want to have a heart to heart and share with you goddesses that you will get through this and it will get better i promise you again in the link in description i have a list of things that i use in order to heal on my journey because when you are going through something like this especially if you are someone like myself that doesn't know what to do and you literally clicked on this video this is a video for you that you are lost you don't have anyone to talk to you don't know where to go i wish i would have had a video like this to help me through my breakup as well as a breakup with a narcissist like i just did not know what to do so definitely check out the link in my description and it will i all of those things is what i use and what i did to help myself and heal myself so please 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 use those resources so thank you goddesses so much for tuning in i'm sorry i know this is probably a really long video but it was so much information that i needed to share and just get off my chest because again i went through this journey on my own and i just want to help other people out there that may have been going through a similar journey so with that being said please send this video to a friend that is either going through a situation of what i described or you know what i'm saying share this with anyone that is going through a heartbreak and maybe they don't even know that they could be in a relationship with a narcissist and you sending the video to them could help them very much so so with that being said don't forget to love on that like button as well as subscribe to my channel if you would like to get more videos like these because again i will be making a part two and then and turn and and, and i'm sorry <laughs> and turn on that notification bell but until next time goddesses i love you